Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another League of Legends guide video. And in today's guide we're going to be looking over Diana. Now Diana is a really good champion for split pushing, 1v1ing, clearing waves and destroying towers like a monster. This champion is really strong and has shown a lot of gameplay in the mid lane in all of the elos and I think she has been really really good for climbing with. And let's also bear in mind that I've done a guide on Diana before but I've not done a guide about her reworked state which happened a while ago so this is why I'm making this guide as well so I can bring you insight on the Diana changes along with what you do newly on her. And overall, I think she is one of the best mid laners so far for being AP melee and still being able to bully a lot of champions and still have some adaptability to a lot of situations for when it comes to playing Diana. So firstly, I'm going to be looking over her abilities and then going in depth with her runes and then every other things that you guys need to know about Diana. So firstly, we're going to be starting off with Diana's passive, which is Moon Silver Blade. Diana permanently has a 10% to 40% attack speed bonus and this depends on her level between level 1 and level 18. And when she casts an ability, the bonus is tripled to 30% to 120%. And this is also based on level. And this happens for 3 seconds. And then the second part of her passive is when Dana's basic attack hits on hit, so that's auto attacks, twice on the third one is going to do a lot more damage. It's going to cleave nearby enemies, so it's going to do AoE damage and it's going to do a lot of damage. Also, the damage is increased by 50% against non-epic monsters so she can clear up the enemy raptors so she can steal some of the camp so that it puts behind the enemy jungler along with it doing a lot of damage to towers as well. This is a really good overall passive for comboing and for split pushing. Then we'll shift over to Diana's Q which is Crescent Strike which is Diana throws a bolt of energy in a curve which goes really far on the lane and it deals magic damage when on hit marking the enemy so they can use it for their dash ability which is what I've not got to yet but the majority of you will remember what this is for which is why it interacts with her dash ability. But also also, you can control the distance of this ability. The only thing you can't control is the fact that it curves, but you can change the distance that it curves at. Then we'll go over to Diana's W, which is Pale Cascade, which is a pretty simple ability. Diana shields herself for up to five seconds, and whenever she detonates the three little wisps around her, she'll gain another shield. And to proc each of the little wisps, you need to be in range with the enemy champion. When you're in melee range, they'll each of them will pop, and after all of them have, Diana will gain another shield, which is probably why people will distance from you when you have that W on which is why you need to gap close while using that. And now we'll move over to Diana's E, which is the old Diana's ultimate, because when she got reworked, her E and R got changed around. But not only that, a lot of things have changed about both the abilities as well. So her E ability is a dash to an enemy champion, and she can dash within 400 range, but she doesn't dash onto him, it's kind of like through to him. So when Yasuo presses E, he kind of like dashes through him, but for her, she kind of just ends up on the other side. And if you combine this ability with your Q ability, when you mark someone with your Q, then you can hit them with the E, and your E's cooldown is completely reset once you hit a target that has the mark on them. The e ability will also be reset if the enemy dies mid dash. Another thing to keep in mind is she can cast any ability during the dash. So you can activate your W during the dash so you can bring up the shield, proc it on them, and when you have marked them with the Q earlier, you'll get the reset. So if they try running away or flashing away, you can always dash onto them again and make sure you get all those shield procs off. And now we'll finish off with Diana's ultimate, which was her old E, but after the rework, it's now ended up being her R, and it's kind of like an Oriana ult. When she ults, she kind of erupts the ground and brings champions closer to her, and it slows all of the enemies in it for two seconds. But if Diana actually pulls in one or more of the enemy champions, the moonlight will come crashing down and hit onto her after one second, which deals magic damage around the whole area. And this is increased for how many people are inside the ultimate, so the more enemy champions you have in there, the more damage it's gonna do. So it's really nice for team fighting and it's really good to start off with, especially when you're jumping into an enemy team. She has such a beautiful kit where she could just always E in, hold her W out so she can shield everything that's incoming, use her R to pull in every one of the champions so that it most likely kills them or sets up for your team, which is really good to have and it's why she is one of the strongest and best team fighting mid laners so far going. So just to summarize up, her passive is used to do a lot of damage. It's basically her core, like she gets attack speed when she's fighting using abilities, when she's comboing, it's really good for that. Also having the third strike, which allows her to do so much damage and it's good to pre-stack that before jumping jumping onto your enemy so you can do a lot of damage that they will not expect. And it's also really good for tearing down towers. Her Q ability is really good for poking enemy champions but along with setting up for your E and R ability. 
because your E ability gets reset for when you go in with your Q. Make sure your Q actually hits the enemy because if you hit the E on them without the mark being there, then it's not going to reset. Bearing in mind, you can use this on minions as well. So you can always use it for just a precaution of having a reset, but also last hitting cannon minions. It's really good for that. But also it's really good to hit enemy champions as much as you can. But even when you're using the Q and the E ability to go in, your W is nicely there for securing you and your R ability is just self-explanatory. You're going to be using that to all in. You're going to make sure your enemy stays close to you and you want to keep that second dash. You don't want to instantly use it unless you know it's going to kill them because you can use that second dash to either escape or to re-engage onto enemies that tried to flash away or escape. So this is why it's really important to not just do everything so fast and not combo in such a flashy way. You need to always, it's like playing Irelia. You don't always use your second Q straight away with Irelia, much like a Diana's E, but you will only use it to kill the enemy and you can use it for if you know they're going to escape if they have flash or anything else that's going to help them escape. So make sure you keep that in mind when playing as Diana. So when it comes to summoner spells, you want to take flash and ignite for if you want to go for the really oppressive and aggressive lane, which is usually going to be used on mid lane, but that's not the only thing you can use on mid lane. Usually this is good to use into enemy mid laners that are duelists or 1v1 champions because you can out trade them and most likely win the fights in that case otherwise you'll have to go flash and tp flash and tp is really good into matchups like rise and nivea people that play really really safe because they're most likely going to have tp as well even if they don't it's really good to take tp anyways because diana in herself already does so much damage so she won't need the ignite all the time you gotta base it upon which champions you're fighting and who you're going to be fighting against in the entire team themselves you can use your tp to roam on bot lane as well because TP TP is not just there to get back to lane. You don't need to always TP back to lane as long as you can make it back to lane securing all the minions that are not shoved into you. So you need to always keep an eye out for the wave management and see how the wave is going on mid lane. And along with having your TP to TP on bot lane, maybe even on top lane, but usually you want to use it for fights. You're going to be the biggest threat when it comes to team fights because you set up the team fights very beautifully with the kit that you have. It's so strong and you're really going to love doing it. So yeah, I'd say TP is highly suggested if you you are fighting against a team that is pretty utility based. Otherwise, I'd say go ignite, but I wouldn't say neglect TP. TP is actually really good and I know a lot of people, especially in the lower elo, that neglect TP. You need to take TP for when you think you need it. But overall, ignite is beautiful as well. So for when it comes to the runes, I can give you a couple of suggestions that is really good to take on Diana. So because she's DPS based and it's really good to stick onto your enemies, I'd highly advise Conqueror for the sustainability along with having your W up because this is going to keep her healthy and pretty tanky from when she's fighting into enemies. So Conqueror is her bread and butter rune. After that, honestly, you can either take Triumph or Presence of Mind. Triumph is really good for surviving in fights, especially in team fights, but Presence of Mind is highly advised only because whenever she ends up fighting enemy champions, especially multiple, she'll end up having mana problems comboing a lot because she uses her abilities consistently, especially in the late game. And it's really good to have in the early game as well, because after you kill the enemy, there's going to be a situation where you need to shove in the wave to deny enemies minions. And because of your lack of mana, you're not able to do that, which is why a lot of people take presence of mind. But I'm not saying this is the main rune page because Diana is so adaptive depending on the comp. Then you want to take legend tenacity so you can reduce the amount of CC that you get. It's really good to fight mid lane mages that have a lot of CC. Then I would take Coop for doing extra damage to low enemy champions, which is usually what assassins take, especially AP assassins or AD assassins or, you know, anyone that can do a lot of damage, especially to targets you're bound to get low. And then after that, you can take taste of blood or ravenous hunt for the sustainability and then for the secondary domination page you can go taste of blood and ravenous hunter just for the increased sustainability for conqueror but remember you don't always have to take this because the next page we're going to look at is faker's diana page so you're going the same things but your secondary is going to be time warp tonic and biscuit delivery and to picture yourself in a scenario for this one faker was actually in a matchup to a leblanc and he was expecting to take a lot of poke and harass which is why he went time warp tonic and biscuit delivery so again it's not only the fact that you have to keep going the same runes, you can change up a little bit, especially the secondary runes, dependent on your matchup. So if you're fighting someone that does a lot of damage and it's not going to cause you to use a lot of mana, you can end up taking bone plating and anything on the resolve tree that's going to help you. Like revitalize as well, that's going to increase your shielding amount, so that's also an alternative option for when you're fighting someone that can poke you a lot. So if you have broad knowledge on the runes, I'd say you can do whatever you want you think is going to help you along in the landing phase and the team fighting phase. 
But if you think the laning phase is going to draw you back from the late game phase, you should always prioritize your runes to help you in the early game. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer. As long as you're going Conqueror and any other thing that helps you sustain within the lane and also keep your damage really high, then you're good to go. You're pretty much going to do a lot of damage and you're going to be really oppressive in teamfights. So now that we've talked about Diana's runes, we're going to be jumping over to her builds. So first we'll start off with her starter items. And usually the start you will go is Doran's ring and two pots. Doran's ring is pretty much the generic start that most AP champions will take that have mana. Then you can go the two pots for healing yourself just in general. Or you could go the riskier option and go Dark Seal and Refillable Pot. Dark Seal also amplifies the amount of potion healing you do, which is why it's nice to pair with Refillable Pot because then it saves you from buying potions all the time from where you go back to the shop. So it's nice to have Refillable Pot instead. The only reason I say it's risky is because you can use this item to gain AP from stacking, but if you die, you lose the stacks. Otherwise, you can go Corruption Pot. I've seen this done in matchups where the Diana is not really playing safe, but prolonging and also farming really well for the late game, along with having the sustainability because, like I said before, Diana can run out of mana pretty fast, and this can be used to counter that fact if you're not taking Presence of Mind as well. But I'd only take this into a matchup that's a utility mage like Zillion. So looking at the first item, Fiendish Codex, this is a nice first build because it's like the similar situation with Vladimir. Having a bit of CDR and having some AP is nice to have in the very, very beginning because you get to use your abilities more often and you don't need to build that into a Zhonya straight away. You can just grab the Fiendish Codex for the damage and for the cooldown. So it's really good to have for when you want to harass the enemy laner very early into the game. But otherwise, you want to build your Gunblade and Kindle Gem into a Proto Belt. This is the biggest and most top item that has been bought on Diana recently because it's so good. It's like a mini dash that also helps her get into range to use her main dash. So it's really nice for wave clear as well, even though she's already a really good wave clear champion. But this adds on to her split pushing potential and the potential to team fight and to jump onto enemy champions. And then you will go Sorcerer's Shoes because you want to get that magic penetration along with having the tier two boots making you move faster. Then looking at her core items, you want to go Nasher's Tooth. Like I talked about Proto Belt already, so you don't need to hear too much about that. But Nasher's Tooth is also a really nice addition because you already get attack speed from your passive and adding it with a attack speed item that has AP is so strong. And this item also has 20% CDR and Proto Belt has 10% CDR. That's 30% already really fast into the game. And if you wanted 40% very, very fast early into the game, you could also go secondary transcendence on the rune page, but you'll have to compensate by taking something that also helps you with that. So if you're fighting a mage, you can go nullifying orb so you can get that AP shield. But overall, I think Nasher's Tooth is a super good core item. It is probably one of the most popular items bought on Diana right now as a core item. Well, it's pretty much understandable since it has so much DPS potential and it combines really well with her passive. And let's not forget how much damage it does. So this is going to be really, really good overall. Getting towers, 1v1ing enemy champions, team fighting, etc. And then looking at her essential items, which is the items you're most likely going to build into, Morella Nama con is really good because you have the magic pen the ap also the fact that it has grievous wounds which is going to reduce enemies healing so it's really good to take into champions like vladimir or people that have healers on their team soraka sona nami it's really good to reduce that healing as much as you can and then you can build rabadon's death cap this is a nice third or fourth item if you're really far ahead i would build this very very early because of how much damage it has and it's going to increase her dps potential you get so much ap this is the best ap item of course for having raw AP and for doing so much damage. And then you can take Void Staff for doing lots of damage, especially to ADCs, because ADCs will most likely have low magic resist, so you can end up doing true damage to them if this rips right through them. Either way, it's going to hurt them a lot because you're going to be piercing right through them, and it's also going to help into tanks that are building magic resist as well. So this is really good for instantly popping enemy champions. And then you can build Zoidnia's Hourglass. You can turn that Fiendish Codex into that, but that doesn't mean you have to build it so late into the game as well. This could be built into champions that are AD and that do a lot of damage. So if you're fighting someone like Zed, Talon, or Yasuo, I would take Zonia's pretty early into the game, building a Seeker's Arm Guard, because that item alone is good enough to tank them early game. This combined with your W ability is going to be really good, especially when someone like Talon jumps onto her. Because Talon takes three strikes, and the fourth one being the bleed, to hurt the enemy champion. So for someone like Diana, since she's going to be jumped onto, she can activate her W, get a shield from activating the ability, and from popping all of the wisps to get a second shield. And to add on to that, you can take bone plating into a champion champion like Talon so it doesn't hurt as much. And if you have Zonias on top of that, you are not going to die at all. Really good into Zed as well because you can use the Zonias active for when Zed ulties. When his ulti is about to pop,
swap, you can use Zonia's Hourglass Active to avoid the ult entirely. You could rush the stopwatch first, so if you're expecting him to do it pretty early into the game. And then you can finish him off since you're gonna have all your abilities up anyways. And remember, if someone does jump onto you and you know you can keep him there, so let's not include Zed as an example because he can always use his R Shadow to get out, but someone like Yasuo or Talon, you can always use your R ability just to keep him in and it's most likely gonna bait out of their flash. The moment they flash, you can QE onto them and save your second E for if they try any other method to escape and you've guaranteed got a kill. And then when it comes to situational items, there's a broad amount. So usually in the past Diana, usually people will build Rod of Ages. People still build Rod of Ages, especially in Platinum or below Platinum, only because that games in the higher elo, they don't last very long, only because that higher elo players have a better understanding of the game and they end up doing things a lot quicker than the lower elo. But I'm not saying they will never build Rod of Ages. Rod of Ages is really good for a game that's going to be prolonged out because throughout the game, you're going to be scaling that item. So it gives you AP, mana, and a bit of tankiness as well. So it increases you all around, whether that be the damage, the amount of mana you have, along with the tankiness you have, because it provides health. But most likely, I would say build this if you know the game's going to be prolonged out, and if you're fighting certain matchups that require this item. You could also take Leander's Torment if you want to do extra burn. Remember, this item also does have a lot of health, so it keeps you pretty healthy, like a juggernaut. And adding the burn also helps you clear waves, and along with popping enemy champions that require this, because this is going to be really good for afflicting grievous wounds on people. So if you already have it, let's say you have it on your Morellonomicon, and you apply the burn, it's going to really stagger the enemy champion and not let them heal a lot. And then if you do have 10 stacks on your Dark Seal, I'd say you should go for the option to go Medjize if you think you're not going to die. Make your decisions very wisely because you do not want to die when you have something like Medjize. If you end up losing all of your stacks later on in the game, you can always sell this item and buy another item that's going to help you instead because this is only good for when it's fully stacked or if it's on its way to being fully stacked. Spellbinder is really nice because it gives you that AP burst when you activate it along with the movement speed. This is really good to use before a team fight, before you actually jump in because everything you do after that is going to hurt so much. Remember, if you have a fully stacked spellbinder, you're going to be doing 200 AP damage just from that one item alone. So technically, that item is the most damaging AP item in the game, and if you use it effectively, it's going to be so rewarding. Lichbane is really nice to have since Diana uses her abilities a lot, and everything she's going to be casting straight after it, you're usually likely going to be auto-attacking anyways. Combining this with your third strike passive, it's going to do so much damage, and it's going to hurt the enemy quite a lot. It also has a lot of AP, some mana sustainability since it takes Sheen, and it also makes your next auto attack after your ability do so much damage. I would take Banshee's Veil into champions that are oppressive AP mages, because you get a lot of magic resist, along with having a spell shield, super good into champions like Syndra or LeBlanc. And then we'll finish off with Abyssal Mask, which is pretty much an off-tank item. I guess this is really good for if you're taking, if you're going top lane, you could go Rod of Ages into Abyssal Mask, or maybe you could go Rod of Ages into a damaging item into an Abyssal Mask, so you're not falling off from the game so early. And then we'll just finish off looking at an example build going Protobel, Rabadon's Death Cap, Sorcerer's Shoes, Nash's Tooth, Void Staff, and Zonia's Hourglass. This is a very simple example build, and a generic Diana will take this into a matchup where it's broadly going to be the same. But remember, things are going to change depending on what champions there are. So I'd say read up on the abilities and read up on the items so you can use this in a situation where you think it's best. So yeah, as long as you're staying within the boundaries and you are choosing the items situated to the champions you're playing into, it's going to be really good since you're adapting really well and it's really nice to keep that consistency of adapting. So now that we talked about Diana's runes, builds, and abilities, let's talk about her pros and cons before we broadly talk about her, conclude her, and talk about extra additional things that we need to. So the pros of Diana is she's really good for sticking to targets like I've told you before because you don't have to use the second E instantly. You can use the first E when you jump onto him using your Q ability so you can stick onto him. It already does so much damage and you can use the second one just to stick onto the enemy champion. And remember, that ultimate also exists. It's going to keep them in range with you. And remember, you can bait out flashes really nicely. So if someone is melee range from you and flashes away, you can always press R to bring them back closer to you. So they've just basically wasted flash. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's really rewarding when you get it off. Now, into a lot of matchups, Dana is a really big lane bully. I'd say it's skill matchup to a champion like Talon, but a Talon would be very annoyed at the fact that she can shield so much along with his bleed. And the reason I'm talking Talon specifically is because I've had the experience and I pretty much main Talon. And going into Diana's, I fought a lot of Diana's and I think I know what the experiences are like. It's not nice knowing that they build a Seeker's Arm Guard and have a double shield along with taking Bone Plating and Revitalize. That's just like big defense on you. But that's the thing. I'm talking in an enemy's perspective. Talking in the perspective for Diana 
Diana, she's just gonna be chilling. She's not gonna die that easy. But it, as long as you're playing her tactically, you're gonna be doing just fine. And she snowballs very nicely with early kills. When she gets early kills, she can start building her core items very fast because only a couple of them are very expensive and then a couple of them are fine in terms of they're under 3k gold. Nasher's Tooth is at 3k gold. Then there's items like Rabadon's Death Cap, which are above 3k. And like I mentioned before, she destroys towers really fast. And if she has the attack speed from Nasher's Tooth and her passive, you can just activate abilities and just keep smashing that tower. It does so much damage. She can almost take towers as fast as Nasus in the mid game. Her wave clear is super good since her Q ability, her shield, and the reset of her dash can just keep killing the minions along with having to use your protobel if you buy it. And if you proc Conqueror and also have Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter, she can get an insane amount of healing on the enemy champions. Because since she DPSs so fast and gets a lot of her abilities off, she can really build up Conqueror super fast and in the mid game her healing is going to be pretty noticeable and it's going to be annoying to fight into. And her CC is good enough to kill and shut down enemies and like I said before, you could use her ultimate, which is is basically her CC to bait the flash and to get such a rewarding kill because you bait out their flash and they also die which means they're gonna come back and be weaker because they're lacking a summoner spell that's very important to them. So now we'll look at Diana's cons which is the fact that she's weak early game into a lot of champions. Remember she has a lot of counter matchups and matchups she wins into so she'll be weak to certain champions within the game and then there'll be matchups where she's super strong into. I'd say in the very early game especially at level 2 she would be weak into Talon but I think levels after she'll be scaling and she'll be doing nicely but it doesn't mean you always have to jump in on the enemy champions because sometimes they can always win the trades in the early game it just depends how you use your abilities and she's pretty squishy. But the reason I say she's gonna be weak is because she doesn't have one shot potential until she's in the mid game. And she uses a lot of mana. Like I've talked about this earlier, she combos a lot and she uses a lot of her abilities super fast since she has low CDR for when you build it because the items you build it are gonna cause her to have low CDR. And she's gonna end up using so much mana, which is probably why you need to take presence of mind to kind of help this fact. And her burst can be denied by items like a hex drinker or even a nullifying orb at the same time. So it's gonna reduce your damage massively. It's like taking secret arm guard into AD champions but someone like Diana her one shot potential especially when she doesn't have kills yet can be denied by a hex drinker so it's best to kill someone before they can even afford that and she does have a lot of counter matchups for champions like Mordekaiser, Irelia, Syndra, maybe Swain and Heimerdinger but remember if you've mastered Diana there's no such thing as a counter matchup because you've learned to play her enough and to fight into that enemy champion. So it's gonna be more of counters for when they're fighting you and especially if you're new to Diana but remember you can always master this champion and do super good into any of the matchups. But also she barely has any disengages. She does have dashes but those dashes require enemy units to actually go on to. While I say enemy units I mean enemy champions and enemy minions. She can't really dash onto wards now. But the only thing she can really dash onto is jungle camps over the wall and stuff. That's probably one of her cases of escaping but, but she lacks the escape potential so she's not really good for escaping so it's really good to know where the enemy jungler is before you start engaging onto the enemy champion. Otherwise it's not gonna be really nice for you. You're gonna probably lose your early game doing that and you're gonna be pressed back really hard. And another thing is I would also kind of categorize this as a con is she's required consistently to commit to team fights which some people won't see as a con but I'd say you're basically going to be very important so you have to be careful about your decisions. You can't just willy-nilly go in and keep dying. You gotta use your engages very nicely and make sure you're team engages with you. There may be situations where your teammates may not be cooperating with you and it can be really annoying but it's good to keep having the habit of knowing how to set up team fights and going to team fights than worrying about why your teammates didn't help you or anything. It's good to keep that consistency because out of a lot of games you're most likely going to have teams that are going to help you and engage with you as aside from the people that are not going to. So it's good to keep up that consistency so you know that you're not doing anything wrong and so you're engaging in the right situation. But I'm not saying go in all the time thinking you're right. I'm saying that you need to be very careful about how you go in on enemy champions and how you set up a team fight and how you communicate about it. So usually in my guide segments, I would complete. So usually in my guide segments, I would put a combo timeline, but I'm not going to include it in this guide video. Instead, at the end of the video, I'm going to link you to the combo guide as soon as it's released so you can see it immediately. The only reason I do this is because it saves me time and it keeps me consistent with the editing and uploading. So I'm going to shift you over to another video for that at the very end. But for now, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Diana before concluding off this video. So I've talked a lot about Diana in terms of how good she is into 
split pushing, 1v1ing and clearing waves. You can also take her into jungle, believe it or not, but she's mostly taken into lane. Mid lane, top lane, you can take her into jungle if you want because her ganking potential is not that bad. And her jungling is pretty much self-explanatory. You could always build a Stalker's Blade into Runic Echoes and you could just go into any of the other items that are core, like her protobelt or anything. But then again, since you're going to be jungling, you're not going to be doing a lot to the enemy champions yet until you're actually ganking consistently. But remember, you can't be always ganking because you're going to be behind in farm as well. So that's probably why jungle isn't so popular for Diana. But I'm not saying it's bad for Diana. I'm just saying that not a lot of people use it compared to mid lane because mid lane is her home lane. And another thing I should have mentioned about when you're fighting into ranged matchups, especially ranged mages, you don't need to push in the wave to them unless you're going to deny the minions. So let's say you've killed them and you've instantly pushed in the wave to deny the enemy champion from getting your minions, then it's fine. But otherwise, don't always pressure minions. Don't always keep killing them from full health and like I'd say the best thing to do is last hit and make sure the wave is staying at your side of the lane only because it sets you up and it sets the jungler up. The reason it sets you up is because you have the distance to close onto them and to fight them because usually if you're pushed into them they're gonna freeze the wave on you and you have no chance to jump onto them because your abilities require you to jump onto enemy champions and you can't jump onto them if they're under the tower early into the game. Plus it also makes you vulnerable to ganks because when you're pushed up you have to be very careful because the reason you you're going to be pushed up regardless is because you need to be in a certain range to actually collect the XP of the minions. Even if you won't be able to farm them, you're being forced to stay forward to get the XP. So it's really hard to make that decision. So it's really nice to last hit minions and only push when necessary. Push when you need to roam, but if you see your teammate nearby about to die and you're able to help them, you could always just completely ditch the minions and go help them, depending on how the situation is. If you can moderately kill the minions and go to your ally and help them while keeping them alive, that's also good too. But remember, ranged champions have the advantage in terms of having to freeze very early into you so and they can farm so safely but the reason you want to freeze is to make an opportunity for your jungler now there will be situations where your jungler is not going to help you only because they have their reason like they either might think it's a bad thing or they may think that they shouldn't do it or maybe they're just bad in general but if that ends up happening it doesn't mean you have to doubt yourself and your jungler the reason you want to keep up this habit is to keep the consistency eventually out of let's say a hundred or maybe a thousand games, most likely your jungler is going to be helping you jumping in and actually engaging onto that. If, you, if there's a jungler that's not jumping in and he's not engaging with you, you don't have to get angry at him. You don't have to flame or be salty about it. Just know that you're being consistent with it and you're also farming safely and you're winning the lane that way. And keep wards down as well as you can always make the opportunity to engage onto enemy champions. Remember, most likely the jungler is going to go in because he or she is going to see the opportunity and they're just going to go in. And if they don't, that's their loss. That's not your or loss because regardless of who gets the kill one of you is going to get the assist as well so it keeps you both ahead so it shouldn't be too much of an issue but if it does end up happening remember to stay consistent within wave freezing and i'll probably make a video soon about wave freezing and minion control eventually because it's quite a big topic to go into and it's good to have on a video for itself but overall i think she is beautiful for split pushing 1v1 etc etc you know team fighting and she's super good for popping adcs but remember to stay tuned for the combo video that i'm going to be releasing with this guide and I'm going to be doing that for my future guides as well, just to help the consistency of my video uploading since I have gone very downhill with the uploading rate. So I'm going to increase the amount I upload since I've had a lot of people request a lot of guides and I'm going to be getting them done ASAP. But also I want to do my best to help the people that are beginning, that are starting league, maybe new to the champions or people that don't even know a lot of things about the champion. And there may be people that know the game and, you know, maybe learn something from this guy. But if you did, do leave a thumbs up and I would love for you guys to hit 50 likes for this video. So anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I missed anything out for the Diana guide, please put it in the comments. Whatever's good, whatever's a nice tip or if you have a bunch of tips, collide it together and I'll pin your comment just so it has something nice to have that I've not included and so that it gives insight to every one of the viewers that are watching my guide videos. So anyways guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned for my combo guide and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace guys and see ya.